Hey everyone, my name is Jacob Hoover and I'm the Education Experience Supervisor here at White Labs. And today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about how to choose a yeast strain if it's your first time home brewing. So you're about to brew your first beer and you go over to look at all the different yeast strains in the cooler and you realize that there's a lot of choices, there's a lot of strains to choose from and it can be kind of overwhelming. So where I want you to start and what I want you to think about is what style of beer am I brewing? Um, because that will tell you a lot about what ingredients you need to use. You want to uh, usually pick traditional ingredients from that region of where that beer style is from. So if you're brewing an English style of beer, you would want to choose English hop varietals, English malt varietals, and continue that logic onto the yeast strains. Um, by doing this, you will reduce the choices from say over 100 different strains to choose from down to 15 or 20. Okay, so now you've identified your beer style and you've narrowed down uh, the choices of strains to a smaller group. Uh, but what's the next step, right? How do I get those 15 to 20 down to, say, maybe three to five different strains to choose from? And the thing that we want you to think about is um, what ingredient in that beer style is going to take dominance in the aroma and flavor? And what I mean by that is, is it a, is it a hop-driven beer? Is it hoppy? Or is it a malt-driven beer? Um, also, is it yeast-driven? You know, some, some beer styles can be yeast-driven as well. So um, once you can identify uh, if it's going to be hop-forward, malt-forward, yeast-forward, you can really, really narrow down those selection of strains. And a great example, continuing the English style uh, or English beer style example, is um, here in our White Lobs taste room, we have a big group of English strains to choose from. And you'll notice that some are typically used for our pale ales and IPAs. Uh, a good example of this is WLP007 uh, Dry English Ale Yeast. But others are going to be found more in our malt-driven beers, like porters and stouts. And uh, we oftentimes use WLP013 London L yeast in these beers. So there's room to play around and try things out, but this, is, this would be the next thing that we would want you to think about when narrowing down your selection. The last thing we'd like you to consider before choosing your yeast strain is what are your fermentation control capabilities, um, especially regarding temperature. Strains can be very finicky when it comes to temperature, and this can oftentimes be one of the main reasons why a first-time home brewer doesn't produce the level of quality beer they would like to. A lot of different strains require a lot of different temperatures, so there's always going to be a strain for you. And if you're confused at this step, be sure to leave us a comment in the section below asking or ask your local homebrew store for more help. So now that we've given you a few tips on selecting your first yeast strain, be sure to remember to have fun with it. Here at White Labs, we're still experimenting with yeast in every batch of beer we brew. And it's a great way for a new homebrewer or even an advanced homebrewer to learn how yeast can contribute flavor and aroma in beer.